Now, according to my calculations, there's probably no better place to get this party started than the beautiful land of Hispania, now known as Spain, in a little location called Asturias de Oviedo. A place that, historically speaking, should have been run by King Adolfonso III at the time, but uh, unfortunately for history, today's not going to be particularly historically accurate. So I'm going to go down here to create your own ruler, and I'm going to create my own ruler by pasting in some high-quality royal DNA <laughs> directly in there that I made earlier. This was never meant to be a woman. I am terribly sorry, milady. I kid, I kid. Obviously, by looking at this head right here, you can tell that we're dealing with a very, very powerful masculine leader of the modern world at the time. So let's give him a ding dong. And oh, no, 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 no. You, sir, were never, ever, ever meant to have hair, nor were you ever, ever, ever meant to have a beard. After all, you are the medieval hitman whose parents and grandparents and great grandparents were probably all related by blood. Now, for the purpose of this video, this great leader is going to be resurrecting a dead religion that faded out long, long ago. A religion by the name of Greco-Roman Hellenism. You know, Zeus, Hades, and that other guy. Now, if we have a look right here, we can see that Hellenism pursues things like communal identity, esotericism, and astrology. All three of which I find absolutely boring beyond words, which is why at some point in this video, I'm going to reform this religion and replace all three of those tenets with slightly more exciting ones. As for culture, we're going to come over here and we're going to go down to Latin and we're going to choose the Roman Empire. Now, seeing as I come from a long line of hitmen and I am Roman, I will give myself a great Roman hitman name like Agentius. I'm going to come over to Dynasty, I'm going to change the name of my house to Hitmanius, and I'm going to change my motto to, if you can't join them, kill them. Actually, just kill him anyway. I'll make the background of my family crest black. I'll head over to emblems. I'll select animals and then I'll pick the legendary duck. I'll give him a nice bright yellow coat of feathers. I'll give him some red feet and I'll give him a blue eye. I'll also head over to my realm and I'll change the name of it to the realm of Australia. And everyone that comes from Australia will be Australian. I'll give Australia a nice bright blue and then I'll paste in my family crest. It only seems fitting seeing as the duck has been quite a regular fixture on my channel lately. Then I'll make myself 16 years of age, young enough to live a long life and make many other people's lives miserable, but old enough to be able to select my education, which is going to be Elusive Shadow. Then I'm going to go into personality and I'm going to give this guy the lustful trait. I'm going to make him greedy. I'm going to make him impatient. I'm also going to make him deceitful. I'm going to make him brave. I'm going to make him ambitious. I'm going to make him callous. I'm also going to give him the vengeful trait. I'll give him the diligent trait. Also the wrathful trait. I may as well make him temperate as well. I'll make him gregarious, zealous, and also fickle. Then lastly, I'm going to make him arbitrary. Now we head into other traits where I basically give him every single favorable trait the game has to offer, like diplomat, family hierarch, August, give him the legendary reveler, make him a legendary blade master, master hunter, strategist, and overseer, gallant, architect, administrator, avaricious, steamer, seducer, torturer, old body scholar, theologian, and miracle worker, renowned physician, herbalist, and gardener. Then we go down here and let's give him the journaler trait, confider trait, athletic trait. Go down a bit further again, and uh, I would make him beautiful, except that... <laughs> that happens to his head, but I will make him a genius and I'll also make him Herculean in strength, pure blooded. Don't know how to pronounce this one. We'll also make him strong. We'll make him shrewd. Head down a bit further again. We'll make him a Sayyid, warrior of the faith, a berserker, pilgrim, a shield maiden of Varangi, and a poet. We'll also go down here and make him born in the purple, a raider, an adventurer, a heresy arc, a peasant leader. Go down a bit more, we'll make him a logistician, a military engineer, aggressive attacker, unyielding defender, fort, a flexible leader, desert warrior, jungle stalker, reader, reckless, holy warrior, open terrain expert, rough terrain expert, forest fire, organizer, winter soldier, and holy monarch. Now we have uh, given this guy every single favorable trait that the game has to offer including beautiful, handsome, or comely. And uh, we'll also give him a couple of other traits, which I believe are favorable, like giantism. Or is that gigantism? I don't I don't really care. We'll, we'll make him albino, and I promised a lizard man, so we'll give him the scaly trait. Ooh, <laughs> that's... That's a good-looking man. And now for the final step in creating the ultimate leader, jacking all of his skill points up to 100. The archetypical perfect man. King Agentius Hitmanius of the Kingdom of Stray. <laughs> It's got quite a ring to it, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do right off the bat is right click on my dude. I'm going to come over here to barbershop and I'm going to make this guy look a little bit more the part. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll, um, I'll give him the Knights Templar, but in black, like the, <laughs> the Knight Hospitaller. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. It's actually the... <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> Giant turban. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> 
a whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. Now, it's essential right off the bat to acknowledge the most important pressing matter, at least as far as I'm concerned, which is raising my crown authority to four. The reason I want to do this is after 150 years, give or take, when I eventually die, my child is going to take over, or at least that's the way I'd like it to be. But unfortunately, with Confederate partition, all of my titles around the world are spread out between all of my children, and I'm probably going to have several hundred by the time I'm dead, which means <laughs> which means that the Kingdom of Australia is just going to be like PP in the wind. However, by selecting primogeniture or ultimogeniture, I can actually give all of my titles to my oldest or youngest kid. In order to do that, I need to go into Roman culture, innovations, and then I need to make my way into early medieval innovations. To do that, though, I need to complete some more tribal innovations. But once I finally get there, this is what I'm looking for. Royal prerogative that allows you to enact absolute crown authority. Also, I'm currently unmarried, nor do I have any concubines, which means that if I have an unforeseen accident, then the kingdom of Australia ceases to exist. So I shall find myself a grand wife, a wife that uh, uh, <laughs> with very low standards. So I'm going to come over here into filters. I'm going to look for a marriage that grants me prestige gain and preferably some inheritable traits. This is the only lady that I stand to gain anything from. She's also honest, ambitious, and patient. I have a feeling that we're <laughs> going to get on Splendidly. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my daughter Saga in holy matrimony. May you find strength and support in your union. Thank you, Yarl. I'm surprised that you think so favorably of me. It's like everybody's too terrified to think anything else. Now we need to choose a lifestyle focus for Agentius Hitmanius. And because he has an education in intrigue, I guess we're going to go with intrigue just so I can put one point into like weeds in a garden, which grants me an additional additional 30% fertility, allowing me to spread my royal oats far and wide and, <laughs> and to create many more of the perfect man. So we'll select temptation focus, which gives us another 20% fertility, a great way to get started. And then once I've got that point in like weeds in a garden, I'm going to switch over to the learning focus and I'm going to choose scientific. That increases the speed at which I learn cultural fascinations by 35%, which when they take 548 years to research is kind of a pretty big deal. Now, if we zoom out ever so slightly, we can see that the kingdom of Australia is just this blue blob right here, but we're surrounded by other people who have other intentions. And uh, that means that they're not allowed to live. Gosh, that sounds very 2022, doesn't it? Young Prince, I challenge you to a duel. So this is us right here, and this is that Prince's liege. Now, having a look at the army strength between the two of us, I'd say that uh, this guy is about to get absolutely thrashed. So now I send my little toy soldiers over, and as you can see, they're sieging the castle walls. We've got our, what are they called? Mangonels? Are they Mangonels? I don't, I don't know. Who cares? Oh, hold on. They're retaliating. <laughs> look at that. He just... Thanos snapped his way into the ether. It looks like we just claimed ourselves an epic artifact of our very first battle. If that's not a good omen, I don't know what is. The Australian conquest of the Sheikdom of Valladolid is now over. I will enforce my demands and I demand that you give me Valladolid. So be it. And now if we zoom out, look at that. Valladolid is now part of the Kingdom of Australia. Now if we just zoom into this little icon right here, see that little throne rune chair? Well, that's the latest addition to Crusader Kings 3 that actually gives you the ability to enter your royal court, which we're going to do right now. This right here is me ruling my kingdom. As you can see, I'm very professional. I have a giant turban. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an idiot. What's really neat, though, is that that ginormous epic famed banner that we claimed from the battle that we just uh, destroyed our enemies in. Well, we can take that and we can hang it on the wall directly behind us to show everyone that we're King Dingling. We can also come over here and we can place down the skull of St. John the... Hold on, wait, what? <laughs> Where do we get this from? Oh, we inherited this when we became the Regnum of Australia. Okay, so we'll put that on display as well. And then we got another couple of banners that we'll just hang up on the other walls. And in doing so, we raise our court's grandeur up to a maximum level of 10. And when you finally get up there, then your prestige goes up, people like you more, and more people want to come and live in your throne room. There are a bunch of freeloading schmucks, I tell ya. You can also pump a whole bunch of money into court amenities to do that as well. But seeing as we've only got 51 gold to our name, we'll just hold off on that momentarily. But we will address this pressing matter immediately. <laughs> 
first person, please come and kneel before me, smell my feet and lick my toes, then tell me your problems. Besides, <laughs> smelling my feet and licking my toes. Yellow guy right here is complaining that blue guy right here marched through a town and he and his knights looted the entire place and stole all the money. Therefore, as leader of this realm, I feel like the only just decision that I can make is to take the land for myself. <laughs> Yes, an act of tyranny will suit me just fine. And now it seems like this bozo is petitioning that people in the realm be not forced to convert to Hellenism. Obviously, that will never, ever happen. You know what? Speaking of that. I'm going to click on you. Demand conversion. Yes. And uh, you, you must be Hellenistic. You must also be Hellenistic. You wouldn't dare say no to me. Oh, my wife, she better be Hellenistic too. And you, you're also Hellenistic. So are you. Oh, wait, hold on. This is a prisoner. I have prisoners in my throne room. I did not realize. Well... <laughs> torture for you. <sighs> it sure is good to be bad. Besides, it had to be done. Well, it seems like I finally turned the ripe old age of 18 and I am now a man. I've also had my first child with a woman that's not my wife. She's also really old. She <laughs> she's also... <laughs> She's also the head of the Hellenistic church, our local priest. Oh my, it looks like my other concubine is pregnant as well. I've been busy. Oh, would you look at that, a little blonde albino baby. Let's name him after me. Wow, he, he inherited gigantism and albinoism and somehow managed to skip all, <laughs> all of the other positive traits. And it looks like my other concubine's given me a daughter. I think I'll give her a good Roman name, like Medusa. Oh, wow, and another one this time actually from my wife? I think I'll call this one Xena Warrior... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, a princess. Oh, wow. Another one only days later. I guess I'll call this one Womanius. Hit Manny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I look at this big old island, a uh, big old island that should be my big old island, I can't help but wonder why the majority of it's owned by this guy right here. Murder, 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 start murder scheme. Now, the poison did its job and he is no more. It also seems that none of my agents are under suspicion, which means no one can trace the poison back to me. After all, no one can notice if there's no one to notice. It also seems like I've got a dozen people in my dungeon that I didn't even know about. So I'm just going to make them all join my royal court in exchange for their freedom. Oh my goodness. It seems like this princess right here has a whole bunch of claims in her name. One of them for, uh, for my land of Australia. No, no, no. One debt to society later. Oh yeah, so remember a while ago how I seduced the princess that had all of those land claims and who I made my jester and whatever else. Anyway, we had a kid now. She wants me to keep it a secret, but the world will know of my child. Actually, I'm pretty sure the world knows about all my children. I I've currently got 10 of them all with different women and uh, they're, they're all extremely... Uh, unique looking children. This one's a genius. This one's got Herculean strength. This one's just a giant albino. A Herculean genius. A pretty smart, strong albino that's obsessed with Hellenism. Another genius. <laughs> this guy inherited a whole bunch of stuff. Well, it seems like I've been summoned back to the royal court again to deal with an extremely important matter. It seems like we've got grave robbers in Asturias. At first, we feared wild animals or obscure powers at work. But then your own court physician, Friednan, was caught red-handed hauling the dead bodies away for his experiments. Please, put a stop to this blasphemy. Why didn't you invite me, Friednand? Just like that, it seems, with every callous decision I make, I become even more crustier. But, you know, that works to my favor, because the crustier you are, the more dread you have. And the more dread you have, well, I mean, just have a look at... <laughs> My family, my concubines, all of the people working for me. See those numbers right there? That shows how terrified they are. And terrified subjects are loyal subjects and obedient subjects and good subjects that have a chance of living past today. Anyway, I've been feeling super great lately. I'm awesome. I'm so good. Matter of fact, I'm going to pay $100 to get somebody to make me an artifact to celebrate my greatness. And now it seems like the dude that I've commissioned to make me a crown has come to me asking for human body parts in order to make something truly mind-blowing. All right, well, I, I guess you could use the people in the dungeon. Oh, so this is what I paid all that money for. And I guess you use the peasants down in the dungeon to make it for you. I mean, whatever. I'll put it on. At least I get 0.12 prestige per month and independent ruler opinion plus two. Really doesn't mean that much when your stats are so maxed out to begin with that your prestige is just going up like a rocket regardless. Look at that piety, though. I'm going to be a religious figurehead in no time. Well, this isn't something you see every day. 
It seems like my spy master Monyo over here has reported to me that my champion Bera is in an illicit affair <laughs> with Monyo. <laughs> Gosh. All right then, well... Thanks for letting me know. All right, so at this point, I've been working really long and hard to spread my reign far and wide across Hispania. So I feel like now I deserve a little bit of R&R, &R, which is why I'm going to conquer Ibiza. I don't know if this tiny little island can handle my giant soldiers, though. But it does look like they're having a good time. Ah, <laughs> Ibiza belongs to me. Gosh, who would have thought that many years in the future, this place would have become a location for <laughs> people like this guy. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. All right, so my one-year-old son is apparently being condemned for his wicked faith. <laughs> what? My failure to condemn and continued proximity to my horrible kid is perceived as open tolerance, tarnishing my court's reputation in the eyes of the clergy and the faith. Hold on. What is this guy's religion? Oh no, my kid is a Catholic. <laughs> I cannot host you anymore, sir. <laughs> What am I going to do? Kick my one-year-old son out. Come off it. Family first, bro. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, gosh. I'm pretty sure this isn't supposed to happen. I recognize the next set of petitioners immediately because it's me. They are Princeps Gaton of Pravia and Rex <laughs> Australia. My lord. <laughs> we have to tell you that many in your realm are intensely dissatisfied with the current tax regime. They find it to be unjustifiably extortionate. Gaton and Agentius acting as one. <laughs> this is so crazy. Oh, there we go. Back in the chair. Woo, that was a trip. Oh, wow. Look at what my son has become. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. Nevertheless, I guess it's time to find this monstrosity a wife. I wish you to... <laughs> I wish you to all the best. Oh, what? She's not my court jester anymore. <laughs> no. That's okay. I'll just turn my son, who I just gave my court jester to as a wife, uh, to be my new <laughs> court jester. <laughs> This is so wacky. Wow, look at him over there. He's a natural. Uh, <laughs> you are always there for me. And I hope you know that I am grateful. My ward bearer approached me in a rare display. <laughs> I'm losing it. All right, so this is my dynasty tree with me right at the top as the dynasty head and then my children and then my children's children. Amazingly, out of the total 28 people right here, only two of them have died, which is pretty good considering it's like the late 800s. Oh man, talk about putting a dampen on the festivities. My wife's dead. <laughs> no one day too soon. Hold on, wait, what? Oh, well, that's fine. Guess it's time to find a new one. I am not loving my choices. Ah, but how about the wife of King Johan of West Francia? Yes, Queen Agathy, she will do nicely. I will romance you, woman. Honestly, the women in this realm don't even stand a chance. 100% success rate with... <laughs> With all of the ladies, I am just too much of a stud to resist. And while I'm at it, I think I'll also carry out a murder scheme on King Johan. That, uh, that's good. 95% success rate. I'll take it. It seems like it is time for King Johan to have his final meal. Bon appetiti. What? No. What are you giving? It's a nice crown. Thank you. But I'm in the middle of a, a murder scheme right now. Bugger off. Thanks to the duck and the poison vial, King Johan is finally dead. All right. Well, that means that your wife is now single and ready to mingle. Oh, she's not a queen anymore. Oh, crap. I guess we could try King Fokar. <laughs> King Fokar. Oh, <laughs> wow. Did anybody else realize that my son is literally Lord Farquaad. All that aside though, I'm now 48 years of age, meaning that I've probably only got about 100 years give or take left under my belt, which is why I feel so vehemently that now is the time to reform Hellenism into the religion that it never was, but it could have been. So let's start by doing something about these three tenets right here, starting with communal identity, where for example, if we select carnal exaltation, we get bonus points from Zeus himself for doing the shebangabang. And also not doing the shebangabang enough is actually is <laughs> considered a sinful action. It also makes every single Hellenist 25% more fertile, so that is good. Now let's do something about esotericism. Uh, what should we do? Decisions, decisions. Oh, human sacrifice. That's, that sounds messy. Oh, goodness. Ritual cannibalism. Oh, goodness me. Makes cannibal a virtue. Oh, Oh, no. All right, I think I'm going to go with Warmonger because that means that when I go to war every other day, my people don't get pissed off. And I guess I'll go with Pursuit of Power that allows me to make one grand invasion in my lifetime. I'm then going to come down to Clerical Tradition and I'm going to change it to Lay Clergy, which allows me to appoint a head of faith. 
obviously, <laughs> that's going to be me. And I'll come over to Religious Attitude and I'll make us a bunch of fundamentalist fanatics. And just like that, Hellenism has now been reformed. And if we look down here, I am the current head of faith. I feel absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> Terrible for everyone on this map. All right, so I'm getting an awful lot of pop-ups on my screen telling me to deal with my prisoners, but uh, I got 52 of them and there's no way I'm going to go through them one by one. So uh, sorry, guys, <laughs> you all get the chop. <laughs> Look at the pop-ups on the side. Prisoner executed. <laughs> Goodness me. What else do you think I should have done? We can't play favorites around here. Now go and cook and clean this guy's skull for me, woman. So it would seem that I'm a tremendously big idiot because I accidentally appointed the head of uh, my custom-made religion to somebody else. I <laughs> didn't mean to. And I don't know how to get it back. Now, this is something that I've not seen before. Found a new empire where every single title that I hold becomes de jure kingdoms of my new empire. Ooh, the empire of Straya. That's got a nice ring to it. Gather the realm. We're making a new empire, everybody. I have done what no one else could. I have united the lands of Australia with those of Sicily and of Italy. Australia reigns supreme. Get it up ya. Now, I don't want to freak anyone out or anything, but uh, I'm 99 years old now. Matter of fact, I've lived such a long life that pretty much all of my children are dead, except a handful of them that, <laughs> that are still toddlers. This one right here got all the good genes though, you know, the genius, the albinoism, the gigantism, the scale, <laughs> the scaliness. So, you know, she's obviously the next in line for the throne. A gaggle of grotty pe- <laughs> <laughs> Grotty pheasants appear before my throne. They are armed with the most vicious flaming farming equipment I've seen in my whole career of quashing rebellions. This being which rules us is a true demon incarnate. No real man could be capable of such violent extremities as we have faced. Take up arms, help us slay it before it transforms. Ah, darling concept. Chancellor, spread the word that I'm a demon. You are now known as the, <laughs> the spawn of Bacchus. <laughs> I look like it too. Anyway, now unless I'm completely mistaken, the entirety of the kingdom of Italia belongs to me, which means that I should be able to dismantle the papacy. Once the entire Italian peninsula has been brought under Hellenic control, we will be able to permanently expunge the Catholic heathens from this world. And then we'll replace Italy with a bunch of myth-worshipping weirdos. Most notably this guy. Isn't he adorable? Later in the void. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not good. It looks like my cheeky, cheeky grandson, King Magnus, the bully of Aquitaine, has uh, started to encroach in my real estate. So I was not actually aware that I have the ability to claim the title of an entire kingdom from a family member. So uh, King Magnus over here, who owns all of the, the purple stuff, I'm going to claim it as my own. Then I'm going to declare war on him and I'm going to declare it for my claim, which is for the entirety of Aquitaine. Imperator A Gentius versus King Magnus. And just like that, we go to war. Ten seconds later. So long, King Magnus. Oh, what? I've outlived another wife. Oh, uh, yeah, this... <laughs> this looks like a match made in hell. Oh, yes. Now, this is a good Dynasty Legacy perk to unlock. Life expectancy plus five. Nope. No, why is life so cruel? Imperator Agentius of Australia's soul has finally been cast to Hades at 136 years of age. He died of old age. A zealous man, he fought for the glory of Zeus against the heathens in one of the greatest holy wars of recent history. Imperator Rutilius ascends to the throne. A generous man? No. Who's this idiot? This uh, really hurts to look at considering I spend approximately the past, I don't know, 15 hours or so <laughs> getting to where I got to. But I lived a long life. A full life. A life where I've been completely wiped off my dynasty tree. You 256 living members would have nothing <laughs> if it wasn't for me. Remember that.